Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, I'm Tammy Kay. Today we're doing something a little different. We're going to be going over a painting I did in plein air a couple months ago. Never quite got around to doing the voiceover. On this channel, usually I do florals, for example. The link will be up soon, but I'm going to be releasing my new Skillshare course. We're gonna be doing three different types of florals, loose, talking about how to relax, um, since I'm a mental health therapist, and find joy in your painting but the algorithm usually is excited when I do florals, but I don't wanna just do florals. So this year I'm changing things. We're gonna do other things. We might even do some birds. I gotta paint this guy. And in my little sketchbook, I like to do landscapes and it is just another little passion of mine. And these are loose and they're just making me happy because I do them outside. So today I'm gonna to teach you how I painted several different trees in my neighborhood and just sat outside, enjoyed what I could see and hear. I was able to just relax, find joy in my painting and paint some nature. So friends, I love painting outdoors as I keep saying, and I usually like a nice flat wash brush, just like this one, this is a quarter inch and it really does the trick when I am painting small in my sketchbook like this. So the reason why I like this is because it just gives me that nice square angular look versus a round brush. And when I'm making tree trunks like this, I'm just literally dabbing from that side of the brush and it's giving me a really cool tree trunk look. So there's kind of that bumpiness that just naturally happens. I like to do this dabbing versus just creating a straight line because it's giving me, as you can see, there's some parts that are really light and some of that are really dark. So we're starting off with our palm trees and I was sitting outside looking at the palm trees in my neighbor's yards. There were three different ones that I could see and so I wanted to paint these three different versions so that you could see the variations that we could make and just kind of play around with the looks the first one, of course, has that thicker trunk. It's a bit shorter, or a lot shorter, I should say. And then the other ones there are pretty thin and tall. And I changed up the colors to um, just to have a variation as well. So now we're starting to add in the branches for our first palm tree. And you know, I'm doing the same method, just dabbing that brush from the side, getting a nice thin mark and, you know, Clearly I'm not being that careful because I've got several different types of green on there and that's okay. We're not going for perfect, I never am. My whole point is that I want you to paint, I want you to create, and I want you to sit outside and give it a go because when you're outside, you can be present in that moment and you're experiencing things that you can see, you can smell, you can taste, sometimes maybe you have a drink with you, you can touch and you can hear. And when we tune into those five senses, we are being in the moment, we are being present, we are not worried about the future, and we are not depressed and upset about the past. So now I'm just doing these tiny little dabbing motions here, just making sure that I'm getting those little tiny leaves or branches. These are fronds, I know. I just don't know the name of those tiny little pieces coming off the branch. And so the other parts of the fronds. If you know, let me know in comments because I would love to be informed on that one. I'm, I'm always stumped. So we're doing the same method here for these palm branches, just dabbing. And it's kind of a fun little activity. It's monotonous, but it gets you into that zone of just painting and just seeing where it takes you. So if you are not comfortable with painting trees, hopefully this tutorial will give you a nice little boost because we are painting many trees today. Not only are we painting these palms, of course, but we are painting a large tree that's gonna have lots of greenery and different shadows and light, and it's just a fun little practice. So I encourage you to try that. So when you're outside, you don't need a ton of things. You need a small thing for water, maybe a jar or a little container like what I have here. I've got my flat brush, but use what you have. A smallish palette would be nice that has a bit of some space for mixing. I always like to kind of do some mixing when I'm out there. And then, of course, I've got my paper towel for dabbing. I've got my sketchbook. And I also have a lap table, which you do not need to have. You can even use a board if you wanted to. But it's just nice to have something flat to put all your stuff on. Although you could balance it in your lap and you'd be fine. So now I'm using a number two round brush 
just for the details and I'm going a bit darker with this green I kept it pretty light before and you can see I'm working well extremely fast with the uh, time lapse of course because we're just doing the same thing over and over I've got some darker green and we are adding that in to create some shadow marks I'm not being dainty about this I'm also not being too careful I'm not being too worried about it as I am just quickly putting in, and this is not time-lapse people, I just paint that fast sometimes, I'm quickly adding in some really light blue so that we can make a really pretty skyline for ourselves. We've already added in some very loose ground, which we will darken up a little bit in a few moments, but just brushing that in, and then I grab some clean water and I spread that paint around, and that keeps my sky very light I'm just gently painting around the trees because I know that that brown, if I swipe a couple times, that dry paint is going to reactivate and start to spread, which you can see in the ground that there was some spreading and that's okay. Look at that. We're just adding some green over the top and it gives some nice shadow. So that's the beauty of watercolor. Next, we are doing that same dabbing motion, but we're doing a very nice bright medium green so now we're starting with our large tree and same thing with the trunk just dabbing I'm gonna make this one pretty wide so get ready and we are going to do some variations of the brown so sometimes I will use a watery mix of brown and other times I will dip into the brown into the well itself and pull out some really concentrated brown uh, this is a tree that was directly in front of me in my neighbor's yard and had some wonderful branches splaying off and it did split in the middle like that pretty early on, pretty low down on the tree. So if you like to use more of a smooth look, definitely use a round brush. There's nothing wrong with that. I, you know, personally just like this tool. I'm comfortable with it. I've been painting landscapes with a flat wash brush for a while and to me it makes the most sense for the way that I practice and my style. So now I'm taking a very light green color and I'm doing that same stipple motion with the corner of the brush if you can see that. Uh, keeping it very light to the touch, very loose and I'm just adding in these little clumps of green and you can almost imagine the light shining through this tree because I'm leaving white space as well as there's a lot of yellow in that green. And that's gonna be the key for bringing a lot of light into our tree. So I do like to start really light, sometimes medium, sometimes really light, so that we can start building up the mid-tones and then the dark tones as well. So now I'm just adding wet on wet, some medium green back into that light green on the ground. And you know, just shifting that brush around, not worrying too much about it. I'm also gonna add shadowed side to this tree. So I'm literally dipping my wet paintbrush into the palette, into the well that has the dark brown paint so that I can get paint as thick as possible just to create a shadowed side. And you can see now the dimension of that tree. It's really starting to come together. This is definitely my favorite tree that I painted this day because there's just so much more space to work with. And as I'm trying to figure out where the little branches go, you just kind of intuitively put those in. So now we're doing that medium green, the mid-tone, and I'm mixing that up right now off camera. It's a nice bright green with some red in there to mellow it down. And we're doing the underside, that's kind of the rule of thumb here. That's where the shadow would be. Don't overthink the shadows though. This is not that important. If you want to just think, okay, kind of the underside of where these little balls of <laughs> branches are or the tree is really having that dark part where the light isn't really showing through that's where you're going to want to put in those mid-tones and the really dark ones as well so you can leave it like this or you can spread out some of that paint with a clean damp brush and either way how you see fit now i'm adding in some of that medium green that's a little bit more of that bright color more on the top so that's where the light would be you want to just try to make sure you protect your white space so that you can see light through the branches your thin detail brush now is going to reign supreme as you start to add in the tiny little brush strokes that show the branches through the leaves friends let me know in comments if you like painting outdoors as much as i do make sure to check out the links to my skillshare courses as well as my art retreat in italy coming up this fall guys 
And Patreon is always there for exclusive content. Thanks for being here. Happy painting and happy mental health. So I hope you enjoyed painting the trees with me and stay tuned soon. We will have more tutorials to come. Check out my art retreat link below as well. If you're interested, I'm going to Italy this year in the fall and you can see more information about that in the link. Talk to you guys later. Happy painting and happy mental health.